Welcome inside the nice and warm and cozy WOSN studios. Hope you're staying warm. It is freezing outside today, but the weather means that it is almost the basketball postseason and we have our draws out. We are all ready to go. We're set. Cancellations on Saturday night though, so we've got a lot to talk about because Friday night's games and then some makeups over the weekend, Mark. So let's jump right in and get started with the NWCC Friday night game, Perry versus USV. It goes to overtime, and we know the winner is getting the league title. Well, how about that? First of all, the schedule makers got it right, Matt, because you know, we got the two best teams in the conference playing at the end, and that's, that's the way it ought to be. Obviously, it doesn't work out that way very often, but you know, polling is hurt. He plays. He has just a couple of points during the basketball game. But uh, Wesley Godfrey steps up, career high 15 points. Monfort has 15 points. Uh, Jacoby Lane Harvey comes through uh, with eight points consecutively in the fourth quarter. They make eight out of 11 free throws in the overtime, and Perry wins himself a championship. Do you think these teams will meet again? That is, of course, a possibility in a sectional final. USV has to get past New Knoxville first. Perry is, is waiting. They have the bye to that sectional final. Oh, we're going to talk, Matt, later on in the show about, you know, the way that the tournaments are all going to play out. But if you just look at it that way, they could well match up again. And that may well be the one of the most interesting sectionals around. And that's one of our final topics today. That could be one of the most interesting sectionals around with those teams that are in that particular bracket. To the PCL now and another league title that kind of fell into place for one team and that yep. Kaleida defeated Miller City easily, 57-40. And then Ottoville knocked off, or excuse me, Continental knocked off Ottoville. So right. that broke up the three-way tie. And now Kaleida sits alone atop the conference. Tough to figure out which one is a bigger surprise, Matt, because, you know, Macomb loses, but Kaleida wins by 17. What a huge win for them over a pretty good Macomb team. But then Continental, who has now upset Columbus Grove, and, uh, and Miller City back-to-back -back weekends to just completely change that particular race. And now we have to find out, does Continental have one more upset in them because they have Kaleida at home this weekend. Kaleida needs to win that game for an outright championship. It's a big weekend for those league titles, and mm -hmm. some teams have already locked up their league titles. But Salina is number eight in D2 polls. Yep. They had a big win over Marion Local, and they can lock up their outright WBL title with wins over Kenton and Elida coming up in the next two Fridays. They do, and of course they're going to be favored in both of those particular basketball games. Kenton on the road, that's always kind of a tough challenge. You know, what are we going to do when we go down to Kenton and play? And then of course Salina at home, and you got to think uh, having Elida at home in the final game of the year, you got to figure if everything is online at that particular point, they're going to beat Elida at home. But two big games for them coming up to win an outright championship. Both Salina and Marion Local, who that was a close game, they won by four. Yep. They're both going to be well prepared for the tournament because of this tough late season schedule. How, how will that factor in for these teams? Well, you know, I think it's, there's two ways to look at that, Matt. Some people like to have a lot of tough games late. You know, they think it prepares them for the tournament. And I kind of get that in some, some sense. But on the other side, wouldn't you like to have one where you could coast a little bit, you know, just kind of get a nice, easy 20-point win, play everybody, feel confident going into things. If you're Marion Local, you get the 5 seed, the 6 seed, and then, what, 9, 10, 11, 12 in your bracket. So Marion Local is in a good spot. Slina will get tested in their tournament. That leads us into the MAC, talking about yep. Marion Local. And St. Henry's another team that pretty much has their league title locked up. They've got have to beat Fort Recovery and Coldwater to secure it outright. And I'm not saying those two are a given, but the, what St. Henry has done, their track record this season, seems like they're on their way towards that. you got to think they're going to get a win over Fort Recovery at home. I mean, that just kind of seems like that, that's a nice thing to have happen for them. On the road with Coldwater, rivalry game eight miles away. That'll be a little bit more of a struggle, but St. Henry is sitting, sitting in a good spot right now. Coldwater gave Tri-Village a did. game, and we know Tri-Village scored right. how many points? Ask Ben Reif. Yeah, 139-49 uh, last Friday night, a 90-point win for, over Hansonia for Tri-Village. They could put points on the board, obviously, and what was that score? Like a 13-point game with Coldwater. Good game for most of the way through, and, and a good win for Tri-Village, but a good, good effort by Coldwater that night. And that was one of those games that was made up yep. from Saturday evening when we got snowed out, and it was played on Monday. How about Delva St. John's beating Vers Versailles by two on Friday night? The MAC, it's it's really competitive. We always talk about yeah. it, but it's so competitive. Well, you look at Versailles, and you know they were kind of my pick early on to win the conference, and that's not going to happen for them. Their losses are to Salina, which of course was a game when Kyle Arns didn't play. He still had that ankle problem he was dealing with. They've lost to St. Henry. They've lost to Marion Local. Those are two kind of blowout games, and then the two-point loss to Delphi St. John's. A good win for St. John's on the road. I had seen in the previous week before against Lincoln View. They struggled some with Lincoln View, but a nice win on the road to come back and beat Versailles. Tuesday night, we had Spencerville LCC. I hope you enjoyed watching it on WOSN and LCC victorious. Yep. And 
I don't know that that's surprising. We know that both these teams are very good and, and they're both playing well heading into the tournament. But another situation where you're, you have a tough game leading up to the end of your regular season. Yeah, and of, and of course, if you're LCC, your siege has been built on the tournament and they have played a lot of good teams. They have some good games left on their schedule yet. Um, good games, of course, from Trey Cobbs and Dan Tez Walton. Seems like we say that every week because they are the leaders of the pack down there. They're playing well. I think you always have to be concerned about what happens with Jake Williams and his shoulder. Um, that's a situation that's going to be ongoing throughout the rest of the season through the tournament. If that holds up, they're in good shape. They got the one seed, yep. and that was one of the tighter votes yep. between them and St. Henry for the one seed. So LCC will play at St. Henry at St. Mary's rather, and then St. Henry will travel up to Finley to, for their district. Like a three-day journey by covered wagon from St. Henry to, to play their sectional game. For Spencerville, now even though they lost last night, they can still share. That was obviously a non-league game, so right. they can share uh, a, at least a share of the NWC title with a win over Lincoln View on Friday. Which NWC team do you think has the best shot at making a deep tournament run? You know, I, I really tried to break that down, Matt, and look at all of them. I mean, Jefferson's got a chance to do some things. They have a cold, cold water and Hopewell Loudon, so Jefferson's got a chance. Paulding. They can win a couple of games before they get in to see Ottawa Glandorf in the tournament, so Paulding can do some things. Bluffton is the one that's really curious to me. Um, they play Van Buren. That may be one of the, the closer matchups that we see yeah. in the tournament early on. Then they get number three, Swanton, so Bluffton could do some damage in there. But obviously, Spencerville is, is in a good position. Grove is in a good spot as well. They're 12 and 6. Um, their losses have been to three really good teams, the three teams that are kind of so so, so we're not sure where Grove is at right now. But if I had to at bet, you would think Spencerville and Grove and perhaps Bluffton the best chances. Always competitive in the NWC. Yep. It's finally taking shape. It took a while for us to figure out <laughs> who's going to be at the top there. Yeah. And Spencerville with a win over Lincoln View, at least the share. Circling back now to Lima Senior, and, and they had a big win over Whitmer yep. on Tuesday night. And they still have to play Defiance, and they'll be right. tested as well. But interesting thing that happened in their bracket, talked about it with Quincy Simpson on our bracket show, is they got the two seed, but then the three and four decided to stay away from them, right. and they went up to the, to the one seed. You don't see that that often. And it, like Todd Walker said on our show, I think it kind of shows you who people are really fearing in that district. Yeah, you know, they, they voted the Spartan second seed. They voted Ashland number one. And, yeah, then everybody jumps into the Ashland bracket and doesn't want to play Lima Senior. And I get that. And here's a hint. If you're playing Lima Senior like Whitmer did on Tuesday night, don't play him without your point guard. The point guard stayed home with some family issues he had to deal with. They turned the ball over more than 25 times in the basketball game. They got close to the 14-point range a couple times. The Spartans blew them out the end. The interesting thing about that Defiance game, Lima Senior is going to go to play St. Francis on Friday night in Toledo and turn around and play Defiance in Defiance at noon on Saturday. So the last week of the season, very busy for the Spartans. Late to early there. They're yeah, how about that? Traveling a bit. How about Liberty Benton? They're 10-0 in the BBC, yep. and it looks like they're going to claim a league title. They are. They've got Lakota left, I think, and they've got uh, one other league game after that. Um, so we'll see what happens with them. Uh, I, I think they're the best team in, the, in that particular league, but if you look at what all the schools in the BBC have done, it's not been a great BBC year this year. It'll be interesting to see how their teams play out in tournament play because the regular season has not been a great for, the, for that particular conference. All right, before we break down a couple of plays for you, let's talk about the Shelby County Athletic League. And I know you've got uh, a game this I week do. that you'll be calling. Yep. Jackson, Center, Lormie, Rushi, they all won league games on Friday. Where do we sit in this league? Well, Rushi's going to win the conference. Uh, they're on top, and they've, they've got a pretty solid hold on the conference, and they're going to win the conference. But what we have on Friday night is we have Jackson Center and Fort Laramie, number two and number three in the conference. That'll be a really interesting matchup. We have a, a team, for in, in, the, in the case of Fort Laramie, that really gets up and down the floor, puts a lot of points on the board. A Jackson Center team, which is more defensive-oriented, we'll have to see which team's uh, style of play wins this particular basketball game. Now, on Saturday night, how about this for a game on Saturday night? I get to do Rushi and and Marion local, yeah. Um, you know the best team in the in the Shelby County League, the second best team probably uh, in the MAC. That'll be a great game down at Rushi. Really looking forward to seeing that as we get into tournament play. A rematch of last from last yeah. year's postseason. Marion local coming yeah. out on top over could, Rushi. could well match up in the regionals again. Marion right. local and Rushi again. So that, that's a really good matchup on this for both of our be games on Friday and Saturday. Coming a bit of a rivalry between those yep. two. They know each other well. All right, let's break down a couple of plays. We don't have the Telestrator okay. for you today. I apologize for that. But we're still going to take a look. And our theme today for Mark is getting to the rim. We've yep. seen a lot of good plays around the basket. And let's get started here with Griffin well, Croft and Spencer. This is Griffin Croft from Spencer. Watch what a great job he does of catching the ball deep in the low post. His drop step into the lane, takes the defense with him, and the high archer off the glass. Very well schooled play by him. We're going to get a similar move right here. This is going to be by Trevor Dotson. He makes a similar move, the false step into the lane, 
take the defender that way. Nice bounce pass entry, by the way. The fall step in and the drop step power move to the goal. That's well done by Trevor Dotson. Then we're going to get a move here by Mitchell Alt from, uh, from Bluffton. And what we see is how well his eyes are up. His eyes are on the court as he comes down the floor in transition. He's able to split the defenders because he saw the play and goes right to the rim and score. If you saw our highlights the other night, he had made a pass on a previous play like that, which also kept the defense honest. And here's Anthony Mastrolasco. He goes baseline, um, takes the ball up against Harden Northern. Here's the return pass. The ball fake and go. This is a sophomore with quite a career. All the way around, two defenders, uses the rim as a help to shield the defender's arms off and scores in the box area. Nice move by that sophomore. So important to finish at the rim, and yes, those players all did that very well. And, and sometimes you got to be able to accept contact down there, but really, I, I really like what happened with the post players because low post players become kind of a forgotten art. We take that post player out on the perimeter, we play screen and roll or pick and pop with him out there. Those two guys we saw in the beginning of that, uh, Dotson and Griffin Croft, the way they were able to post up down low, use their body and score, I like those guys. All right, so now that we know yep. the district draws are Here out, I need to know from you, what are your most intriguing sectional matchups? How many do you want? Okay. You know, how <laughs> much we, time you got? We, oh, how much, yeah. That's a good one. How much time we got? Well, let's look at Lima Senior. Let's go through each Division One. In, in Division One, Lima Senior, and certainly they're going to be the favorite, but they're going to have to get by two teams in Fremont Ross and in Finley that they've already beaten and, in the regular season and beaten them twice. And we always talk about how difficult that is to play somebody for a third time. So let's start with D1 and the Spartans. And, and they should be able to win two games, but we have to be prepared for upsets. Finley was ahead of Lima Senior in the first quarter. The first time they played, they made a nice run at him in the second half. So Finley won't be afraid to play the Spartans, but that'll be a challenge for them right away. What about Division Two? Division Two. Well, now what I really like is what's going on down there um, in, in the Riverdale when we have St. Mary's. Mm -hmm. um, they were the, the bottom, top seed in that particular part of the bracket. They will get Shawnee or Kenton winner. And then what really I think is an intriguing game, number three, Upper Sandusky, number four, Wapak. And what we have, Wapak, you know, has really beaten some good teams this yeah. year. They played everybody tough, it seems like. Um, so I, I really like that. And, and when you look at number three for Upper Soda Valley and, and it's a schedule that's not as tough as what some of the WBL schools have played. And I think there's a scenario there, by the time we get the top half of that bracket, the bottom half all put together, we have four Western Buckeye League teams playing for the district semifinals and for the finals. Love that all WBL well, section bracket, as an district, old WBL, whatever it is. As an old WBL, WBL guy, I do appreciate that because, you know, we used to have just the sectionals, the WBL teams knocked themselves out, and they were playing yeah. a couple teams from up north. and. I think now it's going to be a little bit more for, in favor of the Western Buckeye League to get four teams in there, at least a good shot at it. What are you looking at, Division Four? Well, I think we look at what goes on um, over at Bath, Spencerville. They're going to play the winner of Minster Hard Northern. And, and I think, you know, obviously, Minster will be the favorite of that. That's an interesting matchup because I think Minster can, be, can do some damage coming out of the MAC. The bottom games, though, USV and Knoxville, that's a very good basketball game. Knoxville can give people trouble as well. The winner gets Perry. You put it all together, you're going to get four teams out of probably, let's say, Spencerville matched up with either Perry, USV, or New Knoxville in a, what would be the, what, the district semis, I guess, by the time we get to that point. That whole area down there at the Bath Tournament, that's some good basketball games. Good stuff, Mark. And I know he's been pondering and thinking about these brackets all night now, all week, I should say. Now I'm going to challenge you and go, we're going to go to the girls. First, we have to mention that LCC beat Miller City 86-64 on Tuesday night, and Kayla Verhoff scored 35 points, eight threes. And LCC is a team that could match up with Liberty Benton, who's still undefeated. Maybe an upset alert here? Well, certainly when you have a team that can shoot the ball from the three-point line like LCC can and can get hot from the three-point line, and then you've got the two big girls inside for Liberty Benton. How do you beat that? Well, you score from the perimeter. You make a lot of three balls. So there is a scenario where LCC, who was seated third, and that's not far down the rank. People think they're pretty good. Uh, they, they end up with Liberty Benton. That could be just a shootout type game. And will the inside game from Liberty Benton prevail over the perimeter shooting from Lima Central Catholic? Couple other good games from Tuesday. Bath over Fort Laramie in a pretty close game that yep. was tied with about two minutes to go. Also, Kaleida over Lipsick by 11. Yep. And then Wapak falling to Minster 52 45. Saw the first half of that game. Wapak turned the ball over a lot in the first half. They got it going in the second half, kind of made a run at it, but Minster was very good. Nance Dexter has done a great job, as always, with her team down there. I think they're up to, what, 15 and 5 or something like that right now. Doing a nice job with her team. And finally, OG. They had a win over Archibald on Tuesday night. They have an interesting, they're also in that same draw as LB. That could, they could match up in the district final should they both advance. Just should mention that OG's two losses, LB 
and Bath. Yeah. Very respectable. So now they're 19 and 2. They could be a team to watch. And another team that you and I have our eye on is possibly Ada. Yeah, they are. I kind of like what's going on with Ada. You know, they have four losses over there. Arlington, that's a good basketball team. Crestview, Liberty Benton, and USV. So they've had, you know, four losses to, to good basketball teams. They were only the number six seed. They're going to get hard in Northern early. Then they're going to get the five seed probably in Fort Recovery before running into Marion Local. So they can win some basketball games at Ada as a six seed. And I kind of like some things are going over there. Girls tournament will be coming up very shortly in the next week. Boys yep. to follow the week after that. In the meantime, we've still got some regular season games to play out, so let's run through our broadcast schedule for you quickly. Begins Friday at 9 p.m. with St. Henry vs. Fort Recovery Girls in the MAC. Friday at 10.30, St. Mary's vs. OG Boys, a Western Buckeye League matchup. You can see that on WOSN. Friday at 10.44 on WTLW, Ada vs. Columbus Grove Boys. Saturday, four high school games for you. Elida vs. Bath will air at 7.30 on the West Ohio Sports Network. Fort Lormie vs. Jackson Center. 9 p.m. on Saturday, and you can hear Mark Sean on the call for that. Saturday at 10.30 p.m., Marion Local Rushi Boys, another Mark Shine mm -hmm. special on the call for that. Yep. And then Saturday at 10.30 after the sports report on WTLW, Salina vs. LCC Boys. Two more for you on Sunday, Ottoville vs. Liberty Benton Girls. See that 6 p.m. and then 7.30 p.m., Wapak vs. Coldwater Boys. So we continue to bring you as many games as we possibly can on the West Ohio Sports Network. Well, thank you again, Mark. Great work as always. Another edition of Mark's Madness in the books. Join us next week as we inch closer to those teams raising that gold trophy.